Is your goal simply to be a better climber? Stop, this is a bad goal. Today we're gonna to be talking about good goal setting and how it's gonna make your improvements faster and more achievable. Setting good goals is a proven way to gain faster results, better your motivation and really focus your training. It's the beginning of the year and it's time to start setting goals. But what makes a good goal? Well, this video is here to help you set these amazing goals for the coming year and make the most out of 2022. First, let's cover time frame. You should have long-term goals and short-term goals. These short-term goals are gonna help build motivation and keep you on the right path towards achieving those long-term goals. We're gonna break these goals down into three categories. The highest level of these goals are gonna be your outcome goals. This is basically the end point of what you're trying to achieve. It won't necessarily be breaking to a new grade, we'll get to that in a second. This is higher level than that. It's perhaps winning a competition or being admired by your friends for being so strong. Importantly, these goals are never really fully in your control. The outcome of the competition will depend on other people's performance and you don't know if your friends are actually gonna be that psyched if you get stronger. These goals can form some anxiety and make you a bit worried if you don't achieve them. So for these goals, you should really only be setting one or two and don't rely fully on them. This is where the next two levels of goals are really gonna come into play. Next up, we have performance goals. For a lot of people, this will be breaking into the next grade. Maybe it's a specific boulder problem or route that you're trying to achieve. You really want these type of goals because they're gonna set a well-defined target and specificity is key here. Just being a better climber is very vague, but being a better climber by climbing the next grade, that's more achievable and we know what that means realistically. The last level of these goals is gonna be process goals. Now, as a coach, we really love these goals because they're very specific, very defined, and very achievable. These should be desirable goals that will help you achieve your performance goals and ultimately your outcome goals as well. These can often be shorter in time frame as well, meaning you can set multiples of these and they really help with building motivation and drive for your training sessions. An example of my goals last year were setting very clear defined metrics I wanted to train in my physical strength over the year. I knew my finger strength was okay, my flexibility was excellent, and my fitness was average as well. But my upper body strength was my weakest point. So I set defined goals on what I wanted to do with pull-ups, lever lift, and I worked incrementally for them. I'd set multiple goals throughout the year and try to achieve them along the way. This was my process to achieving my performance goals, which were based around actual climbing performance and specific routes. These goals don't have to be around physical numbers or metrics in your training. They can be around setting good habits and behaviors which will support your performance in the wider picture. A good example of this is in Jen's World Cup boulder season, she'd set three goals which were gonna help her achieve better climbing performance. This was brushing the holds before her first attempt, resting between each attempt so she could look at the boulder problem, reassess, and also try really hard. A key bit of advice I can give you when working towards these process goals is to measure the gain, not the gap. So look at your starting point and see how far you've come, not where you still have to go. This will remove some anxiety and help you become more immersed in the process and build a growth mindset around your training. I like to view the goal setting process as building a roadmap. So where you are now, where you want to be, but importantly, how you're gonna get there. These goals need to be related and intertwined with each other. Now we're thinking about these three different categories of goals. We need to make sure the goals we set within them are smart. That's right, we're gonna talk about smart goals. You've probably seen these before, but they're still just as important for planning out our goals for our climbing and progression. SMART is an acronym and stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Limited. Specific. So this one is going to relate most to your process goals, the ones that are gonna help you achieve your performance and your outcome. If we're thinking specific, just ask yourself the question, is this goal gonna help me achieve my performance? For example, if you're training for a hard, crumpy boulder problem, increasing your finger strength this year might be a really good goal, but going out and doing long runs is probably not gonna help and not be specific towards achieving your outcome. Measurable. Can you measure the increments of progress? This doesn't have to be the improvement in things like pull-ups or finger strength where it's really easy to measure reps or weight. 
This can just be the number of times you repeat a habit that you know is gonna support your performance in the long run. Keeping track of these things is gonna help you monitor your progress and keep you motivated in the long run. Attainable. Make sure your goals are challenging and motivating, but you need to believe you can do them. Something we often see climbers doing are setting goals that are really far out and potentially years away from being able to be done. This kind of takes the pressure off because there's no pressure to do it this year, you are never gonna be able to do it anyways. However, doing that means you're likely gonna not start making gains this year and right now. Setting goals within a year or month time period in that attainable sphere is gonna be really important to setting good goals. Relevant. If your goal is to climb Action Direct, a gnarly pocket climb is very relevant to get strong in pocket grips. Try and make sure the goals in your training are gonna be really relevant to achieving your performance goals. Time limit. Goals need a deadline so that you're fully committed to achieving them in the time you set out. Don't set it so long that you end up slacking off but also be realistic in terms of how long it's going to take to achieve that. Setting yourself a really short time frame can be a way to just stress yourself out or potentially overtrain because you have to try and cram everything in. To recap, we have set out three categories of goal setting, your outcome goals, your performance goals, and your process goals. Write these headings out, then write your goals within there, starting with just one or two of your outcome goals, perhaps more performance goals, but really build that detail into your process goals. This is your roadmap for achieving success in 2022. Remember, look at your individual goals and ask, are they smart? We've missed one big key factor in achieving your goals, and this is accountability. You want to be accountable to your goals, and some ways you can do this is one, writing them down, preferably in a place you can see from day to day, and then also telling your friends or family about them. Take the first step today and tell us what your big goals are for the coming year in the comments below. If you like this video and you learned something new about goal setting, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.